Turning to another of today's major stories, with National Cabinet preparing to debate a relaxation of COVID isolation rules, there are calls for Australia to scrap mandatory isolation entirely. The Health Services Union says many workers are struggling to make ends meet under the present rules. New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet is leading the charge to cut isolation from seven to five days, but other states are resistant unless it's backed by health experts. Jared Hayes is the National President of the Health Services Union. He joins us now. Jared, a pretty bold call you're making here. I think it, well, it, some may say that, Michael, but I think we're in a position now where moving into the third year of the pandemic. Uh, we have got a community that has complied with vaccinations, has complied with all health orders. Uh, they need to see some light at the end of the tunnel, but we are moving forward. And I think at the moment, this would be a relaxation, would make a lot of sense to try to get back to normal. Why are you calling for it, uh, acting on behalf of healthcare workers in particular? Well, we're seeing a, a health workforce that is absolutely exhausted. Uh, this is going in their third year of the pandemic. Uh, we've seen at the peak of the pandemic, eight and a half thousand people furloughing every day. Uh, we've seen probably about 2,000 furloughing now. So with a tired, exhausted workforce, a depleted workforce, and unfortunately, we're seeing people move out of the health and aged care sectors. So it's trying to address workforce pressures in a positive way and utilising common sense and personal responsibility. But where's the common sense? We know how wildly infectious COVID is, Jared, in, uh, for argument's sake, cutting the isolation period altogether, sending these people back into society, infecting more people and putting more pressure on your workers in the healthcare sector. Look, I think uh, what we've seen now, uh, particularly is, uh, in hospitals over the past four or five months, particularly with uh, the flu, uh, the, the worst case scenario hasn't been realised, but the pressure is still on the health system. We don't go to work with the measles, chicken pox. We want people not to go to work with the flu, which would have probably happened two, three years ago. We need to be able to have COVID being treated the same as other infectious diseases. And with common sense to be able to isolate uh, when you've got symptoms and you're unwell, uh, but uh, as be able to move into the community, be able to contribute to the community. So 2023 can look a lot different to 2020 and 2021. Everybody wants uh, this to be over, uh, but, but it's not. I mean, that's just the, the cold, hard fact of the matter. W wouldn't a better option uh, for you to, would be to lobby the government for uh, a greater extended assistance for healthcare workers who do, as you say, Jared, have to furlough? Look, what worries me is, Michael, recently we've seen the potential withdrawal of uh, isolation leave, particularly with casuals. We've seen a lot of compliance in the last two to three years. I don't want to see a point where we get to people just are not complying. Uh, we need to move with the community. There is huge community pressure from people being unwell, but there's also community pressure from people being able to put food on the table, being able to go to work or be able to run a business. So we've got to be able to move forward over the next coming years. And bearing in mind, COVID's never going away. Mm. This will be here forever, like a cold, like a flu, like everything else. So we've got to learn how we live with it and make sure that we can live and you know, walk and chew gum at the same time effectively. Do you think there is widespread community support for the scrapping of isolation rules at the moment? Look, I, I think there is. Uh, this is a discussion which I think is very important this week. The community has done an incredible job over the last two to, two to three years. Uh, we need to bring, uh, I guess, bring it home uh, together as we started together. And I think at the moment we're starting to see people fraying at the edges. Uh, trying to see some level of common sense. Everyone has complied or most people have complied with vaccinations. So we need to be able to live with COVID. And I think it's an important thing that personal responsibility within the community is paramount. And if we can uh, enhance that uh, responsibility, uh, I think the community will come with us and we should be able to live with COVID. Jared Hayes from the Health Services Union. Appreciate your time this morning and arguing a case on News Breakfast. Thanks very much, Michael.